Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do back to the basics and we're going to do just your regular black and white conversion. You're going to open your image. This is the image I used for your processing post and the edit crop enhancing post. So it's the same image. It's already been processed. It's already been color corrected. It's been sharpened. It's been just part of the workflow. So once you do that, you come back to www.ribbit.com, you upload, or if you already have your picture there. Now, I, and this is the simplest way and also the truest way to make your colored image into a true black and white. I go over to the colors tabs on the left and you can see that's where we went for our processing to correct our colors. What I do to make my black and whites a true black and white is I take my saturation tab and I move it all the way to the left. And you can see what that did to my picture. And I think coloring might be a little bit off on my camera, but I'm gonna post the pictures as well as the video. Um, and then you have your temperature setting over there by your saturation. If you move this right, it lightens it, you move it left, it darkens it. Um, I like my photos a little lighter, so I'm going to bring mine over to the right hand side to about 33-38%. I'm going to hit apply, and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to adjust my exposure just a little bit. I'm going to lighten it with the exposure. I'm not going to touch the highlights. I'm going to darken it just slightly with the shadows and the contrast I am going to just bring it down to about a negative four. I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to save it and that is how you get a basic black and white image. Save. All right now I'm going to go right up to the undo portion of this. You can see the, if you ever make a mistake, there's a little undo. And if you just keep, you click that and it does undoes everything that you had done to your image. Like if you didn't like um, the way you cropped it and you already hit apply, you just go up to the undo and it will revert your image back to before you cropped it. Now I just reverted my image back to the colored version so I can show you the other way um, to make your image black and white. If you go up to the top, you're going to see the effects tab. You're going to click that and on your left hand side, all your effects are going to come down. Well, they have the option for black and white. You click it and it makes your image black and white. Um, we don't need our effect painting box open right now because we're not going to do any selective color or anything in this pose. So I'm going to hit the X. You can color filter it over here as well if you um, don't like it. Like if you bring it down, you can see what it's doing. You, you know, you go to the right, it makes it lighter. You go to the left, it makes it lighter. You stay in the middle. It just adds tones to your um, image uh, and I don't usually use this one so I'm going to I guess leave it right here over in a pink part I'm going to hit apply and then you can save it and you have yourself a black and white image now I'm going to undo everything because there's still one more way um, you can go up here to pro you see up here you have a pro option right there and that brings you over here where you have pro adjust clone curves levels dodge and burning pro editor I'm gonna go under my curves and this will let you make it into a dramatic Sophia um, faded but the black and white features on here are the tri -X 400 and 800 if I click 400 it makes it pretty bright if I click the 1600, it makes it a little darker. Um, I like the 400, so I'm going to click that. You have the option to fade it in or out. Um, we're going to work on all that stuff later on uh, to show you what you can do with your fading options. 
I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to go to levels, which is kind of the same thing as going under the uh, basic edit, edits tab and changing your exposure. Um, you got your nubs up top. If you go to the right hand and you bring it in to the left, it makes it really bright. If you take the one on the left hand side and you bring it to the right, it makes it really dark. If you take the one in the middle and you move it, it does the same thing. It's just not as bright. I'm going to move this middle one over to the left about uh, 0.87. As I said before, I like my pictures a little brighter. Now your output levels are at the bottom. Your left nub, if you bring it over, it lowers the contrast in your photo. If you take the right one, you bring it to the left, it creates a darker contrast. Um, you would use this if you don't like all that white that's there. And you see what it's doing? It's changing the colors. Um, I don't like it all that bright, so I'm going to do 226, and then I'm going to go to the left, and I'm going to re-brighten it just a tad bit by... 19 and then I'm going to hit apply and my photo is done. That's it. That's all there is to it. Very, very simple. You would do the same thing with the Sophia. You would go up to your effects tab down to your Sophia and then you would click on it and you have the tone option. Let's see. You can adjust your there's a little circle thing you can't see it very well but you can move that and you can see as I'm moving it how it changed the tone of the Sophia look so I don't like the basic look so usually if I do a Sophia I come down and I bring it really low to the bottom um, I just I don't really like the aged look and you also have the fade option again um, but we're not going to do that right now now I'm just going to leave it to the left, hit apply, save it, and then you now have your Sophia look. And on to the next post. Try it. Submit your photos. Let's see what you came up with.